Hello, Brooklyn. This is your host, Brando, and welcome to The Pulse, the show that gives you the very best and the latest talent in your favorite borough. Today on the show, I have a poet slash painter. Have you ever heard of one of those? Well, I have, and he's a very good friend of mine. Also, I have the funkiest group of funkadelic people you will have met this year. I guarantee it. It's the United Funk Order, and they are coming in full steam to your world. So please stay tuned and enjoy yourselves. Hello and welcome. Today I have on the show a poet slash painter from right here in Brooklyn. His name is Alejandro Amoretti. And Alejandro, thank you so much for coming today. Certainly. Uh, we have one of your pieces here on display. And I must say, your art, it really straddles the line between uh, poetry and painting. Um, and as you see here, uh, as you can see at home, um, these, this maze-like structure on Alejandro's painting is actually composed of poetry. Now, Alejandro, uh, what, uh, what would you say, uh, what is a poem slash painting? And what is, to be even more forthwith, a poet slash painter? Sure. Uh, well, in the simplest form, I'm a poet who paints poetry onto a painting. Uh, I create a painting, and, uh, and that expresses one facet of whatever I'm trying to express, but then there's also the poetry, and the two forms, they, uh, they work together, they work to, against each other um, to create uh, a dynamic that is difficult to achieve with just poetry or just painting. And I, I, I notice that uh, that dynamic is, uh, the dynamic between the poem and between the painting is tied into this maze-like form which you seem to employ on um, all of your pieces. Now, um, uh, it's a labyrinth. A labyrinth <sighs> is a series of winding pathways that in some cases lead towards a goal, uh, an end, an escape, um, in some cases not. Uh, we're most familiar in modern Western culture with the labyrinth through the myth of Theseus and the Minotaur. Uh, Theseus has to go into the labyrinth to slay the Minotaur, um, and the only way he's guided out is because Ariadne gives him a thread. So he's able to trace his way in and then trace his way back out. However, that's just uh, one example of labyrinths in, uh, in culture. Um, in the Middle Ages, religions often employed labyrinths as a source of meditation. Mm -hmm. In the floor plans and gardens of cathedrals, there were often labyrinths which people would walk and pray uh, and lose themselves in sometimes. Um, even occasionally, a prayer would be written into a labyrinth. And how does the labyrinth and the, the properties and the significance of a labyrinth play into your art? It destroys linearity. Uh, a poem is traditionally linear, lines. All writing is linear, lines after lines after lines. Um, and yes. that starts to close you in. You don't have many places to go when there's only one direction that you can write in. Uh, for me, the labyrinth destroys that linearity. It allows my words to branch out to pursue different courses, uh, find different fates for itself. Um, and that's very important to what my writing wants to do, to escape the narrowness of line after line after line. So the poem is uh, a branching, uh, a branching uh, entity. It, it, it has no uh, set, uh, 
no, no set way, one way of reading it. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Correct. Does the poem inspire the maze and the painting? Uh, does, the, does the maze inspire the content of the poetry? Uh, it goes both ways. Usually I start with the maze design. I'll create a maze, usually it's a very mathematical process, uh, figuring out exactly how to fit so many pathways into a confined space, uh, usually with a resolution sometimes, uh, they don't resolve. However, uh, I start with the maze and then I create a painting based on a, a theme or an archetype. Uh, love, fate, the ocean, sex. And, uh, and I, I pour that into the canvas and then from that I derive some kind of uh, poetic conceit um, based on that theme. Although sometimes it goes the other way. I have an idea for a poem, so I'll paint around that and then the poem comes uh, inevitably after it as it goes on top of the painting. Now, Alejandro, who are some of your main influences as a poet oh, and as a painter as well? Sure. Uh, as a painter, I would say Jackson Pollock. Uh, I draw a lot of chaos from him. Uh, Clifford Still, who actually this piece is based on one of his, uh, one of his paintings. Um, he works a lot with empty space and with seemingly simplistic streaks of paint. And that's something that I, uh, I, I gravitate towards painting-wise. Uh, in terms of writing, I would say Chaucer, Borges, David Foster Wallace. Was there a particular instance uh, that inspired you to uh, create this unique form of painting and writing? Uh, a particular piece or author, a moment of inspiration? Well, uh, there are a few different things that led me here. Uh, when I was young, I would read the Choose Your Own Adventure stories, yes. where it, you switch pages depending on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that started to get my gears going, that you could break free from this form of one storyline. Um, when I encountered Borges in high school, I felt the same thing. Even though he was just telling stories that were linear in themselves, uh, I felt this expansion of the palette uh, of what writing could, could uh, work with. Um, so from that, I started to think about how I could make my words escape from the short story, the sonnet, uh, all these traditional forms that really hem you in in certain ways. And I see that um, there's, if this form is anything but traditional. And as I glance at this piece here, um, I realize I have never, uh, I have not yet had the time to read one of your pieces um, in its entirety. Um, and I w must say, um, upon first glance, that this form could be quite daunting um, to a potential reader, to a, a viewer of your art. Um, and well, how, how, do you, uh, how do you think your viewers, your uh, audience would approach your work when it can be such a such a maze-like and um, almost unending um, uh, task to read this. <sighs> sure, well, I generally don't concern myself with the audience. Um, I'm a writer, I write. Readers read. Sometimes I'm a reader, but not when I'm a writer. Uh, and it's, however someone approaches this, that's uh, his choice. If someone um, reads the first line and gets to the point where you have to twist your head and stops, that's the poem for that person. If you read through the entire thing, every single pathway from beginning to end, that's your poem. If you just let your eyes wander across it and catch random words, that's your poem. Um, I'm not here to say what the poem is for the audience. The audience decides that. And I think that's one of the benefits of this form, that as an audience member, you're not being told what to do with this. You're gaining some freedom, uh, some responsibility on how to read it. Um, I think that makes it a more enriching experience. That sounds like fun. Ask, is there, is there any uh, piece, uh, any poetry you'd like to um, gift our audience with today? Certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought some with me. Um, I'll just step over here and read you some of my poetry. It would be our pleasure. Thank you. This piece is just one pathway in a labyrinth that I created. Uh, the labyrinth is called The Last Red and Dying Evening. 
Brooklyn Bridge is falling brick by brick into the black abyss of endless emptiness. Broken cables lashing the vacuous sky of the last red and dying evening. Not a clean soul left to grieve over the grave of Kings County's queen. Rockaway sleeps. The crows grow quiet in Crown Heights. Not a care, no riotous blood left to be bled for the dark affairs of men. Yet the heart still beats, and still some dread, undreamt of thonic creature creeps beneath the cracked city streets, empty eyed, waiting to unleash terror beyond measure, tongue tied eternity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Alejandro. And thank you so much for being on the show. Um, I'd just like to remind our viewers uh, that Alejandro Amoretti can be reached uh, at his website, alejandroamoretti.com. And thank you once again for coming. Thank you. <laughs>